So Amir al-Mumin السلام, at the same time that he was a man of prayer, fasting, munajat, but he was very active in supporting the oppressed and he mobilized all his power to establish social justice. Even some people say he was killed because of that. Uh, you know, he says, uh, you know, one of the Arabic uh, writers, he says he was killed in his mihrab because of his adala. People were not, you know, finding any problem with Amir al -Muni except that he was, you know, a person who was not giving a special privilege to people who were used to getting privilege. Uh, so this is one of the main contributions of the prophets, liberation from uh, social uh, injustice and enslavement. Inshallah, in the next session, we have another section of the book, which is about the aim or the ultimate end and purpose of sending prophets and messengers and books. Why God has sent the prophets and the messengers? Why God has sent the books? Inshallah, this is the next topic. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Do we have any question? Any comment? Sheikh, I have a question, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, so the idea is to, it's about dunya and akhira. Yes. So the idea is to become the best in whatever. Uh, whatever work we do and whatever profession we undertake or career, mm. um, but also to become the best in, in focusing for the Akhirah as well. In the dunya we side of things, how do we balance, um, how do we, a lot, how do you balance the income, for example, with the lifestyle have we, I'm, I'm not sure if, we, if we've had this conversation before in class. We may have, have done. How do you balance um, uh, having lots of money? Are we supposed to have... Should that be a goal that we should be chasing as men, as women? It is, should that not be the case? Because mm -hmm. the more money you have, you have, the more you can give to charity. Yes. But we're told the more... You have, challenge, the more responsibility, the more you're answerable as well. So how do we, yeah, how do we work through that? Uh, in dunya, we have to be very successful. In akhira, we have to be successful. When it comes to dunya, when we say to be very successful, it doesn't mean to be very rich. It means that you have to be very productive. So, for example, you are a student. Try to be the best student, but not by neglecting your other responsibilities. We believe that, uh, you know, if we do things in a balanced way, with the help that we get from religion, from Iman, and clear, you know, heart, clear mind, with sincerity, with dua, we can be very successful as a student, as a teacher, as an engineer, as a doctor, as a politician. Religion helps you to perform better than people who lack this kind of support. When it comes to business, try to be the most successful businessman or woman, but this doesn't mean to be the richest or you know, to grow your business you know, uh, without limit. No, it means that fulfill your other responsibilities, be one of the best in your field of business, but best not by making more money, by more greediness, best by being more ethical, more uh, environment friendly, for example, giving more job opportunities to people, especially poor people. 
Okay? There is barakah in this. Inshallah, you will even gain more money, but then you don't want to use it for yourself. So in some lectures on uh, poverty, I have explained that uh, in Islam, we have different uh, senses for the term poverty. Poverty sometimes is used in the sense of lacking provision. On the Day of Judgment, some people are poor, meaning they don't have any provision. Or if they had made some good actions, their good actions are given to the people that they have you know, wronged them. For example, there is hadith, Do you know who is bankrupt? And then the hadith explains that the one that has done something, for example, has done ghaiba of someone else, and now, in order to please that person, his good actions are given to that person. Now he's bankrupt. So, this is a negative kind of bankruptcy of poverty. Poverty in the sense of not being able to make enough living. This is also, ne also bad. Not bad ethically, but means something that we have to combat. We should eradicate poverty in this sense. We should help the poor people to meet their needs and look after themselves. Okay? Islam is not in favor of you know, having more poor people. Then there is another sense, and that is to be very productive, generate wealth, but having very simple life. You li live like you know, poor people or a little bit above poor people, like middle group. When it comes to the ulama and rulers, they need to be very close to the poor people especially ulama and rulers, leaders. But ordinary mu'manin also should not be living luxurious life, even if they can afford. Amir al-Mu'manin was making lots of money, but he was not spending or saving for himself. He was, you know, even working for people. He was sometimes hired by people during those 25 years. He was sometimes working for himself. He was digging wells. He was, you know, planting trees. He was making gardens, but not keeping for himself. So it's very good to be choosing to have very simple life, but making lots of money and give it away. Another sense of poverty is poverty in the sense of humility. In a spiritual literature, there is great emphasis on being poor, faqir. Faqir here means someone who is very humble, you know, feels nothing. So there are four senses for poverty. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative. But anyway, we need to be as Muslims doing our best to excel in every field which is good. Not excel in cheating, excel in, I don't know, <laughs> killing people, or etc. No, in every good field, in every science, every discipline, every, you know, educational field, every uh, charity work, we should be trying to be the best with the balance, with, without neglecting other things, but all with a mindset that takes eternal life as a priority and we believe if you have eternal life as a priority you can excel better in worldly affairs in the same way that when you think about death you can better appreciate the gift of life some people you know think why muslims you know for example so much think about death why you visit graves you know you th remember the dead people why you know Enjoy your life. We say we can, in this way, better enjoy our life. Because we know how special is the gift of life when we know that it's not guaranteed to remain forever. And if we connect it to the previous generations who have blessed us so that we are here living today. Uh, so 
this balance is very important in Islam. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Is there any other question? Okay. So maybe we can end the first session. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, Sister Zarmina, how?